Bugsy Siegel once famously said, We only kill each other. A reference to the fallacy the mobsters only murdered other mobsters. But as we know, many innocent civilians have been killed by the mob. Another famous myth is that the American Mafia despised rapists. However, over the years, there have been numerous Cosa Nostra members who have had arrests or convictions for rape. Not only were rapists accepted throughout their ranks, but some actually made it to the higher echelons of Cosa Nostra, including Christopher Kritik Fernari and Paul Vario. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at the rape related convictions of high ranking Lucchese family members Christopher Christi Tikfanari and Paul Vario. In the early 1980s, Christopher Christi Tikfanari was the consigliere of the Lucchese crime family. He was well respected and rubbed shoulders with powerful mobsters from other families, including Anthony Fatoni Salerno. However, 40 years before, the seasoned mobster displayed a sinister sexual side. On August the 28th, 1943, the then 19 year old Christopher Fanari, along with two friends, Nunzio Morone, 22, and John Tallini, 21, all from Brooklyn, picked up three young women, aged 20, 21, and 22, under the pretense of driving them to a restaurant in Canarsie. However, the vehicle took a detour and the boys drove the young women to a secluded spot. It was here that Christopher Fanari and his two friends attempted to gang rape the terrified girls. Fanari and his pals turned increasingly vicious as the petrified young women fought back. One girl was severely beaten, another had her jaw smashed horrifically, and another scrambled out the car and leapt into a nearby creek where she hid in the water for an hour. Fanari, Moroni and Tallini were all found guilty of second degree assault and attempted rape. One newspaper covered the conviction. Rape trio sentenced to stiff jail terms. Three hoodlums convicted of attempts to rape three girls on an auto ride drew heavy sentences yesterday in Brooklyn. Together with a denunciation from the bench. One of the girls suffered a fractured jaw when she resisted. Another girl jumped into Canarsie Creek. The third girl was beaten. Kings County Judge Peter J. Brancato made it 15 to 30 years in Sing Sing for Christopher Fanari 19 of 1935 West 7th Street and 10 to 20 years each for Nunzio Morone 22 of 2523 West Street and John Tallini 21 of 2476 85th Street, all Brooklyn. Apparently, the world is going back. Your crime is despicable, Brancato said. It was equal to that of the pagan philosopher Cato, alleged to have loaned his wife to his creditors to pay his debts. Turning to Tallini, born in Palermo, Italy, the court added, Had you committed the same crime in Palermo, a city that has a deep respect for womanhood, I dare say you never would have been brought to trial. The girls 20, 21 and 22 met the trio last August 28th at Coney Island and accepted invitations to ride to a Canarsie restaurant. But the car driven by one of the three stopped in a secluded spot. One girl jumped into Canarsie Creek and stood in water to her neck for an hour, she said. Later, she crawled ashore where she remained until her cries were heard next morning. The hosts were grabbed three days later. A Brooklyn jury found the prisoners guilty last November 19th of second degree assault and attempted rape. Christopher Fanari was released from prison in 1956 and allegedly inducted into the Lucchese crime family shortly after, potentially in 1957, just before the books were closed. Being made into the Lucchese family so quickly after his release, we can only speculate that Fanari impressed some particularly powerful people while serving his time on his attempted rape conviction. 
Based in Brooklyn, Fenari was also close with mobsters of the Colombo crime family, especially during the height of the First Gallo War. When Fenari was picked up on a parole violation, the authorities found pictures of members of the Gallo crew hidden in a Bible at his place. At the time, Joe Magliocco was the new boss of the Profacci family. And Gerald Scher, a young prosecutor at the time, said, Fenari had been given the pictures because Magliocco wanted the men murdered. When quizzed about the Gallo photos, Fenari told authorities, I sell life insurance and my boss gave them pictures to me. He sarcastically continued. He told me to avoid selling insurance policies to these guys. They might not be living too much longer. Fenari's sexual assault history didn't stop his rise up the crime family. And by the 1970s, Christopher Christie Tick Fenari was a captain. And then, in around 1981, the man who participated in an attempted gang rape was elevated to the position of conciliary. Famously, and perhaps unfairly, Fenari was sentenced to 100 years in the commission trial in 1987. Christopher Christie Tick Fenari was released on parole in September 2014 and he would die four years later. He was 94 years of age. Paul Vario, famous in the eyes of the public for Paul Sorvino's portrayal of him as Paul Cicero in the gangster classic Goodfellas, started his life of crime early, like most mobsters. In 1931, age 18, he was arrested with Anthony Pepitone on burglary charges after being caught stripping an automobile as well as carrying revolvers. In 1933, he was arrested for the burglary of a barber shop, and then he was arrested at the age of 20 in 1934, along with Petro Conti, and charged with stealing $331 worth of tyres and batteries from an auto accessory store on August 9th that year. However, both Vario and Conti were released for lack of evidence. All pretty standard criminal activity for a young gangster. But it was in 1936 when the 22-year-old Paul Vario was alleged to have committed rape. On September the 13th, 1936, Paul Vario and Anthony Romano drove 18-year-old Francis Graziana to a secluded spot on 157th Avenue and 91st Street, Howard Beach. It was here that they raped the young girl and beat her. Vario and Romano weren't arrested until February the next year for the assault. On November the 23rd, 1937, Anthony Romano and Paul Vario were convicted of first-degree rape regarding the assault on 18-year-old Francis Graziana. Paul Vario was sentenced to 10 to 20 years in Sing Sing Prison. However, Paul Vario's initial trial was delayed after the victim and members of her family were threatened. It was reported, When the victim of the attack was called to the witness stand, she hesitated in her identification of Vario, causing the trial to be postponed. She said she and her family had been threatened with death, but after she was assured of protection, the trial was resumed and she testified against Vario. Another report said, The trial began November the 3rd, but when Miss Graziana failed to identify Romano and Vario as her attackers, District Attorney Sullivan of Queens obtained an adjournment. According to the indictment, Sullivan's investigation showed that five men, during the time that Romano and Vario were awaiting trial, went to Miss Graziana's home and threatened her and members of her family with death if she identified Romano and Vario at their trial. As is well documented, Paul Vario's rape conviction did not hold back his Cosa Nostra career. He would be inducted into the Lucchese crime family and go on to become a very powerful captain, with a crew of greatly feared and violent mobsters around him. Some reports even suggest that in the late 1960s and early 1970s, Paul Vario was elevated to the position of acting consigliere. I will cover Paul Vario's career in greater detail in a future video. The examples of Christopher Fenari and Paul Vario prospering in the American Mafia despite rape-related convictions 
provide us with further indications of the hypocrisy around Cosa Nostra and their men of honour. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.